God bless everyone, Sammy D, out here on Show Road. <laughs> it's a little chilly out here, but you know what? I love the weathers, all seasons. I make the best of them, and I dress for the occasion, but it's not that bad, it's a little sunny, but windy. And I, I want to share with you, I want to just talk to your heart. want to bring a word of life into your heart, and I want you to meditate on this word. Take it to heart. Look it up in scripture. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. And again I want to thank everyone that watches my videos. I thank you and you are an encouragement to me. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. This is what God said. He's speaking directly to the children of Israel, to people, to us. He's not speaking through a prophet. He's not speaking through the apostles. He's not speaking through a person. Although the Bible says in 1 Timothy, all oh, scripture is given by inspiration of God. But this time God is speaking directly. And he says to the people of Israel that have been backslidden, they fell away from God. Judah, which means praise, fell from God. They lost their praise. They lost their relationship with God. They had followed other gods. They forsook God. God was married to them, and they wanted a divorce. Now, God doesn't believe in divorce, but these people wanted to divorce God. And I'm talking about divorce. Somebody said that marriage is a three-ring circus. Marriage is a three-ring circus. You have the engagement ring. And then you have the wedding ring. And then you have the suffering. <laughs> it's a joke. Don't get mad at me. Don't turn this off. Don't throw stones at me. And if uh, you want another one, here it is. What's the difference between love and marriage? Love is blind. Marriage is an eye opener. What did I get myself into here? <laughs> I know what you're saying. Sam, your jokes are dry and cold. That's all right. Let's get by that. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. <laughs> God told Israel. He says, they backslid, as I mentioned, fell away from God, wanted a divorce, didn't want God anymore. And then God says, come, let us reason together. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Isn't that a good God? He could have just snuffed them out. He had the right to destroy them. But instead, he says, come, let us reason together. In our modern day, in our modern times, it would be like if you worked in a corporation, a business, in a place, office, a business associated place, the corporate world, people have staff meetings, board meetings. I worked in the hospitals, they had a lot of board meetings. I used to call them boring meetings. I don't like too many meetings. They talk a lot, yada, 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 blah, 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 nothing gets done. You bring your complaint, you bring your issues, you talk for two hours, and then boom, you walk out, no changes. Then you gotta have a meeting about the meeting. I didn't like board meetings, put it that way. Maybe you do, I didn't care for them. But I had to go to them, part of the program. But here God says, come, let us reason. Let us have a meeting. Bring your lawyers. Bring your scholars. Bring your theologians. 
throw in the bishop and the pastor. Bring the prophet. Bring the apostles, the deacon, deaconess, the officers. Bring everybody. Come, let us reason together. Bring the priest. Bring the pope. <laughs> bring them all. Come, let us reason together, he says. Let's talk about this. You backslid. You want a divorce. You go chasing after other gods. You forgot what I've done for you. I brought you out of bondage in Egypt. I fed you. I took care of you for 40 years in the wilderness. I took care of the next generation that followed you. And you're still backsliding on me. Come, let us reason. Let's talk about this. <laughs> Isn't he a good God? Let us reason together. The first word he says is come you gotta show up if you wanna grow up if not you'll just throw up but he asks you to come if you don't come you'll miss the meeting what was it about you weren't there so he says come let us reason bring your case present your argument present your issues in the meeting come you gotta show up you gotta be there god is asking you to come after him god is asking you to get next to him god is asking you to embrace him god is asking you to come back to him he was telling israel come back you fell too far but come i'm giving you an opportunity i think the prodigal son heard that when he said come and he got up and came to his senses and he went back to his father's house come don't stay there jesus said come on to me all ye that labor and a heavy laden come there's an invitation going out. God is calling you to come to his meeting. <laughs> he's the lawyer and he's the judge. And he says, come bring your case. Bring your arguments. Present your issues. And then he says, let us reason. <laughs> Let's talk about this. Let's reason. Let's find a solution. Let's find a find a way to get this thing fixed and then of course he says let us reason together in unity see God is God all to himself he don't need you he don't need me <laughs> I need him he chose us in the beloved he elected us. He chose the foolish thing. We don't need us. We weren't there when he created everything. In fact, Job had an argument with him. And God said, where were you? When I formed the stars and the sun and the moon, stretched the heavens and formed the galaxies uh, and spoke things into existence. Where were you, Job? Job said, I, 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 I was nowhere around. That's right. <laughs> He's got all to himself. I know there's some people that think they're doing God a favor. Their ministry or their titles or their lifestyle in the church and the body of Christ. But listen, God don't need us. God wiped out a whole nation. Solomon and Gomorrah and then he wiped out another one when he told Noah, build the ark. He don't need us. We need him. We need to breathe his air. There's people tell me I don't believe in God will stop breathing. But the very air you breathe is His. Come, let us reason together in unity. God wants the body of Christ to be unified. You're my brother, you're my sister. If I go to Africa and I meet Christians there, we're together. If I go to China, if I go to Asia, wherever I go, South Central America, Puerto Rico, Brooklyn, Manhattan, the Bronx, Staten Island, Boston, New Jersey, Long Island, 
Queens, wherever I go, and I meet a believer, we're unified. We believe in one thing, Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And therefore, we have one thing in common, the Lordship of Jesus. Come, let us reason. Let's talk about this. Let's fix this up together. And I'll finalize it by saying this. His answer. Listen to me. Follow me. God said come. You backslid. Forgot me. Want a divorce. But come. Let us reason together. And just imagine in the meeting. Those that were there. The, the priests. The leaders. Of Israel. Pastors, preachers, teachers, apostles, they probably asked the Lord, well, what's the solution? How are you going to fix this? Yeah, we backslid. Yeah, we forsook you. What are you going to do to bring us back? Then he came out, bing, with a master plan. <laughs> ah, some thousands of years later. <laughs> mm. He decided to, to take off his crown and hang it up and take his robe off. You know where I'm going, right? And he left all his glory and he stepped into this world. That's where you get the incarnation of Jesus. He became man, but he was still God. His answer to all was a cross, an old rugged cross. A man was nailed to it, ripped off his beard. They whipped him. They cut him up. They spit at him. They mocked him. They criticized him. And they nailed him to the tree. And then they buried him. And in three days, he came back up. And he's alive forevermore. That was his reasoning. That was his solution. That was his purpose for calling a meeting. Come, let us reason together. I have an answer. I have a solution. And all those that believe in Jesus... And all those that look to the cross, uh, they're united uh, with God. Uh, they're in fellowship with God. They're unified with God. Uh, they're in partnership with God. Uh, they walked on the God's anointing, uh, on the God's covenant, uh, on the God's blessing. Uh, come, let us reason together. Uh, you fall from God. You fell from God. You backslid. You left them. You believe in other religions, other philosophies, other opinions, but he is saying to you, come, let us reason. Let us reason together. Come, and if you look towards the cross of Calvary, you'll find yourself free from sin. You don't have to backslide anymore. You don't have to say sidestep anymore. You don't have to do the move anymore something like that <laughs> but you can stay in the presence of God eternally in the presence of the holy God that said come let us reason let's talk about this I want to bless you I want to heal you I want to strengthen you I want to pick you up I want to lift you up I want to turn you around I want to prosper you I want to increase your earnings I have a purpose for you a good so come, let us reason together. Now the meeting swifted, changed. The meeting place is at Calvary, the cross. And then when you get to the cross, you go beyond the cross. Right to the throne, <laughs> where the king sits. Ephesians, Paul said, we're sitting up in our places. We're sitting up with him, spiritually speaking. The meeting is at Calvary, and then beyond Calvary at the throne. I don't know about you, I'll let you go with this. I'm sitting with him.
I'm meeting with him. I'm reasoning. Gave up. Surrendered. Took on his life. He lives through me. I love Jesus. I'll let you go. God bless you. Take care of yourself.